Well, hello again. It's a real pleasure to greet you once more as we gather together for virtual worship. My name is Andrew Bale and this is my wife Tracy and together we are responsible for leading the Salvation Army in South End. Now South End is not very far from Hadley where William Booth established his farm colony and uh, the founder used to refer to South End as Whitechapel by the sea. Today we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 4 again and we're going to consider how God can help us with anxiety and suffering. But first we're going to sing and our opening song today is Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. <laughs> Well, we're now going to come before God in prayer and in a moment Tracy is going to lead us to the throne of grace. But before she does, we're going to listen to a beautiful rendition of Eric Ball's composition, Morning Song, which is brought to us by those who attended Cobham Hall Music School back in 1985. And after Tracy has prayed, we're going to sing together those wonderful words, When I Look Into Your Holiness.
you enjoyed listening to that piece of music and I hope that it helped you be more aware of God's presence just now. As we spend these moments in prayer together, I want you to consider how close God feels to you right now. Just close your eyes and just hold out your hands and think about your week, think about your life, think about your circumstances that you find yourself in just now. It may be that you feel very alone, that you feel that nobody can help you, but I just want to assure you that God is near. Amen. And he wants to help. He wants you not to carry those burdens on your own. He wants you to lift them up to him, to offload them on him. So just open up your hands and release them to God just now. And just allow his Holy Spirit to come to you and to fill you and to hug you, to draw you close to him so that you can sense his presence and allow those healing powers that he brings into your life right now. Don't resist it, but just allow him in. Let's pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, all I want to pray for my friends this morning is that they sense you close by, that they can feel your presence in their lives. Father, being a Christian is so much more than just going to church, so much more than just going through the motions by reading our Bible, by praying every day. But it's not just lip service, it's about connecting with you. It's about having a real, mm -hmm. tangible relationship with you. And today, Father, I want my friends to just feel the presence of your Holy Spirit right where they are right now. To feel that wonderful, tingly feeling that we sense when we allow you to draw close to us. You're never further away than the length of our own arm because that's as far as we can push you. And so, Father God, we just pray that you will enable us to let down those barriers that perhaps we allow ourselves to build up around us at times, just in order to be able to cope with life. And I just pray, Father, that right now, right where they are, my friends will feel your love, your warmth, your presence. Whatever they need to receive from you today, Lord, I pray that they will receive it. Mm. And I ask this in the precious and powerful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
When I prepare virtual worship every week, the larger part of that preparation time is taken up in trying to source suitable material from the internet that I can use. There are all kinds of issues that you have to come over, not least copyright. And this week I came across a fantastic video which we're going to share now. I've no idea who produced this video. I've no idea who the musicians are, the Salvationists who feature, or even the name of the band that's playing. But it brightened my spirits this week, and I think it might do the same for you. So enjoy Do Lord by Andrew Makarith. today comes from those familiar verses of Philippians chapter 4, just a few, verses 4 to 7. And if they weren't familiar to you before you started watching regularly um, our virtual worship, they certainly will be now. And today I'm reading them from the New American Standard Version of the Bible. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all people. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and pleading, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. 
Amen. As I said earlier, trying to find good quality material to use each week in virtual worship is a time consuming exercise. So I'm always grateful when people send me clips that we can use. And this week, Sarah Middleton, one of our young people's ministry workers, has sent through a clip to a children's song called God Loves Me. I hope that you'll uh, join in, even if these, this song is not familiar to you.
Well, it's your opportunity to sing again, but this song is a very old Salvation Army song. It didn't even make its way into our last songbook, but the words of the song fit in so well with the message that Tracy is going to be sharing with us later. The only version I could find of this song is one that's been arranged and is sung by a young group of American musicians who call themselves The Singing Company. They formed in 2005 and uh, they're still going strong and I hope that you will be able to sing along and that you'll recognise the words and you will draw some sense of encouragement from them. In the fight, say, does your heart grow weary? Do you find your path is rough and thorny? And above the sky is dark and stormy. Never mind, go on. Lay aside all fear and onward pressing. Bravely fight and God will give his blessing. Though the war at times may prove distressing. Never mind, go on. When the road we tread. Let our mind all be go on. 
Did you know that last Monday was Blue Monday? Apparently, it has been scientifically proven that the third Monday in January is the bleakest in the calendar year. A combination, apparently, of spending too much money before Christmas, eating too much during Christmas, having to wait longer than usual to be paid after Christmas, and then facing the prospect of January and February is just too much for the human heart and mind to cope with. I think I have probably watched and read the news more in the last 10 months than I have ever done in my life. And on Monday, whilst glancing at the BBC website, the following link caught my eye. Blue Monday, why it's a load of rubbish. This is what the BBC had to say on the subject. Blue Monday has been trending on Twitter since the weekend. You might think it's relatable after the past year, but unsurprisingly, there's nothing scientific about it. The phrase was reportedly coined by psychologist Cliff Arnold in 2004. He did it for Sky Travel and it was used as part of an advertising campaign to encourage people to cheer themselves up by booking holidays in January. Apparently, Cliff also came up with the notion that the third Monday in June is the happiest of the year. He came up with this idea to help Walls sell more ice creams. I say research, but the decision that the third Monday in January is the most depressing day of the year and that the third Monday in June is the least depressing day of the year was nothing more than an arbitrary decision. Two Mondays in the year simply plucked out of thin air. At first glance, the notion of Blue Monday might seem harmless, but as the BBC pointed out in their article, Labelling one day a year can be damaging for people dealing with mental health issues. Today, I want to talk about how the Bible helps us deal with anxiety and despair. But I wanted to make it absolutely clear at the onset that I'm not downplaying the complex and debilitating nature of clinical depression. Depression is a serious illness that requires professional support and treatment. And what I want to share this morning is not in any way meant to come across as a cure. Having said that, God does declare in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, I am the Lord your healer. And for Christians, the grace of God the power of prayer and the promises found within scripture will always be an important part of the healing process. As we sang in our opening song, Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, who like thee his praise should sing. The early day salvationists had what some might call a naive attitude to suffering. Some people would offer as evidence of that the song we sang earlier written by Richard Slater. But actually, if you look at the lyrics of that song closely, it is all very much about the reality of suffering. It is just that the writer chooses to focus his attention on God rather than on the troubles that surround him. The last accusation one could make against those men and women who pioneered the work of the Salvation Army is that they didn't know what it meant to suffer. I want to start today by actually jumping to the end of my sermon. I don't get too excited because I am going to be including the middle as well. In a few moments, we're going to be singing that beautiful song written by Jack Izzard. Dear Lord, I lift my heart to thee, my helplessness I own. 
We're going to be using a beautiful tune written by Trevor Davis, which until my preparation this week, I actually hadn't heard before. But don't worry if the tune is new to you because it is very easy to pick up and sing. Before meeting Andrew, although I was vaguely aware, I'd never really read the words of song 489, but since being introduced to them, they have become a real source of comfort. If I'm being honest, I find the words a little archaic, but in the companion to the songbook of the Salvation Army, written by Gordon Taylor, Jack says of this song that it arose from his experience as a teenager and was written in response to those times when life, for any reason, becomes difficult and painfully bleak, beyond our own powers to redeem, and health is undermined, and we fear for our ability even to appear to cope. Jack goes on to say that at times like this, one has to lean fully upon the facts that our feelings would deny that God's presence and power are not conditional upon our continual awareness of them. And that although our emotional reactions fluctuate and circumstances alter, God's love and care are forever dependable. Which brings me nicely to our Bible reading. Paul was writing to the Christians in Philippi, which is the location of the first Christian church established in Europe. Paul was a man who knew what it was to suffer. His letters were not written from a naive place of comfort. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul testifies to his experience of suffering. He talks about imprisonment, beatings, brushes with death. He says that five times he received 40 lashes minus one at the hands of his fellow Jews. That he was beaten with rods and even stoned three times. He talks about being constantly in danger from rivers, robbers, the Jews, the Gentiles. He talks about danger at sea, danger in the city and danger among false brothers. He tells of his hardship, sleepless nights, hunger and thirst and cold and exposure. Paul was familiar with suffering. In fact, the letter he wrote to the Philippian church was written from prison. Like all Christians at that time, the church in Philippi was subject to persecution and they also knew what it was like to suffer. So when Paul writes to them and says in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, I shall say it again, rejoice He's not being shallow or insensitive. So what is Paul's secret? How can he have the confidence to tell the Philippians to rejoice? Not only once, but twice when he is writing from a position of personal suffering to a congregation that is also suffering. The answer is found at the end of verse 5. The Lord is near. These four words have been subject to much debate among Bible translators. Some say like the New American Bible version which we used earlier, the Lord is near. Or they use words to that effect like God is close by, the Lord is ever near. Never forget the nearness of your Lord. Whereas others translate these words as a reference to Christ's return. The Lord is coming soon or the master is about to arrive. He could show up at any minute. However we decide to translate this phrase, the truth the words refer to remain the same. It's just as Jack Izzard puts it in his song, not only 
When I sense you nearer, you most surely nigh. Nor have you, Lord, a quicker ear, because my faith is high. My changing moods do not control your covenanted aid. You have the guardian of my soul, and I am not afraid. Everything that Paul says to the Philippians, every word of encouragement within the chapter we re read from, is based on the fact that God is present at all times, right at the heart of our current experience. Whether we woke up this morning suffering with clinical depression, whether we woke up this morning feeling a little bit down because last week we acknowledged Blue Monday, or whether we were simply a little bit fed up with the consequences of this wretched pandemic, whether we have been seriously ill, whether we have lost loved ones, lost our jobs or lost our homes, nothing alters the fact that God is near. Paul says to the Philippians, do not worry about anything. God is near. As we struggle, continue to struggle with the very real burden of COVID-19, we will find that burden easier to bear when we recognise that we are not carrying it on our own. Last week we shared a video that Andrew had made. I guess it was a tribute to the NHS in many ways, set to the beautiful song, This is the Air I Breathe. And at the end of that video, he quoted verses from Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all you who labour and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. In this wonderful promise, Christ doesn't offer to take our burdens away, but to provide us with a means of carrying them that is easier and lighter. Sometimes when our lives are struck by unexpected tragedy, understandably, our faith can be shaken. Just as Jack Izzard said in the quote I shared earlier, times when life for any reason becomes difficult and painfully bleak and we fear our ability even to appear to cope. I wonder if this is where you find yourself today. Andrew and I have been literally staggered as to the extent in which God has spoken to individuals all around the world through this new and unexpected ministry of virtual worship. Perhaps God is speaking to you right now, directly to you. Suffering, anxiety, despair. These are very real burdens for many of us at the moment. Doctors, nurses, teachers, social workers, shop assistants, ministers of religion, the list could go on. People worn out by the demands currently being placed upon them. If 2020 and the beginning of 2021 has brought us to our knees, we might as well take advantage of that fact by pausing in prayer and recognising that God is close by. We have probably preached on these words during the last 10 months more than any other, so I don't want to labour the point today, but let me simply conclude by saying what Paul says to the Philippians. Make your requests known to God in prayer with thanksgiving 
and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. If you do that repeatedly, faithfully, if necessary, desperately, you will find eventually that quietness and confidence and waiting on the Lord will be your strength, your sure defence and peace will be your reward. God bless you. Thank you for joining with us today and I really hope that you have found it beneficial that the content of the meeting and the message that I shared with you has drawn you closer to God and you can sense his presence as you go into the coming week. We're going to be listening to our benediction in a moment that our core pianist Dennis Evans is going to bring to us. You can sing along if you want to and it's that beautiful song, Let Nothing disturb you. But before we have the benediction we're going to sing our closing song which this week has been chosen by Logan from Romford who joins with us every week and it's a very fitting song for this week's meeting. I'll go in the strength of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> 